Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Paul knew this. He knew that his body now belonged to the Lord. And he writes to the church at Corinth and says, you guys, all your bodies belong to the Lord. And then last week we saw that he explains, though, if you are married, you're in a relationship. He writes this in the book of Ephesians. He says that don't you know that marriage is a great mystery? And what was the mystery it represented? Christ and what? His church. You are a living example of Christ and the church. And by the way, all we have to do as husbands is look at how Jesus loves his church, then we know how we're to love our wives. Right? Ephesians chapter... Now some guys actually have the audacity to read this next part of 1 Corinthians 7 and say that Paul said he's against marriage. I'm like, when we read this, would you look and see if you can spot, there's a verse that says why he's writing these words. Okay, and he's going to now turn his attention. Last week he turned his attention to the ones that were married. He said, if you're married, you have a, a divided attention. with your, you, you know, you present, your body belongs to God, but you're married now, so you also have to take care of who else with your body? Your spouse. He said, your wives, your body's no longer yours. It's your husband's. Husbands, your body's no longer yours. It's your wife's. So Paul is saying, you know, you, you, you kind of have some competition for your time uh, allotment. You know, the, the, you, you don't have the freedom, and this is what we're going to spot today. For the singles, so, and I know some of the singles are like, but I want to be married now. Paul would say these words to you. Let me show you. Turn to 1 Corinthians 7, verse 17. He says, Only as the Lord has assigned to each one, as God has called each of us, in this manner let him walk. And so I direct it in all the churches, he says, was any man called when he was already circumcised? Well, he's not to become uncircumcised. And has anyone been called in uncircumcision? Then he's not to be circumcised. For circumcision is nothing. Uncircumcision, he says, is nothing. But what really matters is keeping the commandments of God. And what commandments did Jesus give us? Love one another, right? They asked him, what's the, the lawyer said, what's the greatest command? He said, how's it read to you? He said, well, love the Lord your God. You know, Deuteronomy, Leviticus. He, the lawyer knew the law. He's like, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. And, and the second was like unto the first. What was the second commandment? You got it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said, good job. Do that. You'll live. And the attorney, wishing to justify himself, said, and who is my neighbor? And that's when Jesus, we're going to study this, by the way, on family night this Friday. If you want to come out, we're going to go over his answer to the attorney when he answers him how to know who your brother is. He tells him a little parable. We're going to study that for the attribute of brotherly kindness we're going to be learning about this week. But, but that's a different study. So go back to this. Paul says circumcision isn't the point. Uncircumcision isn't the point. What the point is, is keeping God's command. And his command, Jesus said, a new commandment, John chapter 13, verse 35, he says, a new commandment I give to you, that you do what? Love one another. It's actually not new. It's a commandment that's already given. But he has to, you know, repeat. And by the way, if you read the Gospel of John, you know he doesn't just say this one time, does he? Or if you read on in John's other epistles, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, he keeps saying, love one another. For love is from God, and everyone who loveth is born of God. But he who loveth not, what's he say? Knoweth not God. For God is love. When you come to know his love, that's when you can tell there's a God. The God that can replace hate with love. And then Paul goes on, he says in verse 20, Now each man must remain in the condition which he was called. Were you called while you were a slave, Paul says? Now they had slaves back then. 
some of you are thinking, is there a, a modern equivalent? How about um, employee and employer? <laughs> no. <laughs> some of you feel like your, your, your boss is a slave master. So, you know, I mean, if you want to use this for getting some, some relative uh, ideas here. He says, if were you called as, a, as an employee? Well, don't worry about it. But you are to become as a free man, he says, if you can. Rather do that. But he who is called, it says, in the, in the Lord, while a slave or an employee, is the Lord's freed man. The Lord has freed us, he says. And likewise, he who is called while free is also Christ's slave. Now, you were bought with a price, so don't become slaves of men. Brethren, each one of us is to remain with God in that condition in which he was called. Now, they had slaves in those days, so he, he recognized some of them were struggling. What if I'm a slave? It, Paul said, don't worry about it. You're Christ, Christ's free man. Christ has freed you. Now he goes on to t speak to the single folks uh, there. And the, remember, all of these things he's writing about at the beginning of the chapter, he says, now concerning the things what you guys asked me about. So they must have asked him about, what about if you're a slave? What about if you're married? What about if you're single? What about if you're a virgin? You know, Paul is answering their questions right now. And so he goes on to say, now concerning the virgins. He says, I have no command from the Lord. But I'll give my opinion. I want you to pay attention right here. Is this the Lord said, thus saith the Lord? Or is this Paul saying, this is my opinion? Read it closely, verse 25. It says, this is my opinion. He says, and by the mercy of the Lord, it is trustworthy. You know, I'm giving you a solid opinion in the Lord, but, but it's my opinion. Would you highlight that for me? Because someday somebody's going to teach you something after verse 25. Throw it in your face like the Bible says thou shalt do this or that or not do this or that. And they won't even pay attention that this was just Paul saying this is my opinion. Are we allowed to have opinions? Sure. By the way, this proves it. Even Paul the Apostle had an opinion that he puts it in the scripture. It's allowed to have an opinion. But don't say that your opinion is the word of the Lord if the Lord didn't tell you that this is the word of the Lord. Just call it what it is. It's just your opinion. You know, how many fights would we save if the Christians would actually follow the example of Paul and just say, well, my opinion is this, you know, but I mean, it's not like that thus says the Lord or anything. This is just what I think. Do you think that we get along better? I mean, if the Apostle Paul is willing to say, this is just my opinion, then I think we should take some notes. Maybe we should learn this phrase, that when it's not something God is telling us to say on his behalf, if you're not speaking for the Lord, you're not gifted with the gift of prophecy, and you're not declaring, thus saith the Lord, then quit talking like you are saying it's the Lord. Because somebody might take it out of context. Just like they do the rest of this chapter. Let me show you what they do with it. You're going to crack up. They actually believe. This is thus saith the Lord. And they go to read this. To the poor people who are single. Ready for all you single folks. This, this is what they do. Don't, don't take this wrong. okay? This, this is just what some guys that don't pay attention when they teach how they twist the Word of God. And I don't like those fellows. If you haven't figured it out, I want to teach you it in context. Because it says here, Paul says, I think then that in view of the present distress, did they have distress in the days when Paul was writing? First of all, where was Paul writing from to the church at Corinth? Does anyone remember? Prison. Poor guy. He says, in view of the present distress that's going on, that's going on and you know in, in in light of the basic times that we're living in he said i think it's good for a man that he remain as he is now are you bound to a wife he says don't seek to be released are you released from a wife he said don't seek to be bound okay so he's saying whatever circumstance you're in live with it considering the the distress of the times why are you so trying to change everything? 
Just, he's, he's saying, stay content with what you got. But not everyone can hear this, and he, knew, he knows this. He goes on and says, but if you marry, what does it say? And if a virgin marries, she has not sinned. If you marry and you're single, it's not like that's a sin. Now, how that they can turn this around, well, I'll show you what they do. It's a little further down. They actually pull just one part of a verse out and say, if you're single, don't get married. Bible's against marriage. That's not what it says. He just said, if you're single, and if a virgin marries, she hasn't sinned. Yet it says, yet she will have trouble in this life. And he says, and I'm trying to spare you. Now, for the gal that gets married, is she going to have any troubles in this life? I mean, okay, first of all, by design, she's a helpmate, right? Which means she just got yoked to a yo-yo who needs help, right? I mean, I mean, <laughs> well, you're not supposed to talk like this as a pastor, right? To a man that needed help, which by definition, if he needed help, he's got problems. So the poor girl has got to help out the one who needs help because he's got problems. Paul says, I'm trying to spare you. Okay, if you can hear this. He, now, he doesn't say, thus says the Lord. He says, this is my opinion. Now, if you, you know, if you can hear this, you're just saving yourself some trouble, gals. Okay, but listen to verse 29. But I say, brethren, that the time has been shortened so that from now on, those who have wives should be as though they had none. Those who weep as though they did not weep. Those who rejoice as though they did not rejoice. Those who, who, who he says, buy as though they do not possess. As those, and those who use the world as though they did not make full use of it. For the form of this world, Paul says, is passing away. But I want you to be free from concern. He says, one who is unmarried is concerned about the things of the Lord, how he might please the Lord. But the one who's married is concerned about the things of the world, how he might please his wife. And his interests are divided. Now, the, one, the woman who's unmarried and the virgin, she's only concerned about things of the Lord. And she may be holy both in body and spirit, but the one who is married is concerned about things of the world, how she may please her husband. Do you see how he's explaining that if you are married, you got to, your body, you know, you can't just, like the single person can say, here I am, Lord, with, with no other distraction, right? No other um, obligations. They, they're free to just be full out, here I am, I'm yours, Lord. You want to go on a missions trip, you're single, you can go. You want to go on a missions trip and you're married, guess what? You better talk this over with your spouse, right? I mean, now we're not just talking you. You got, you got someone else involved here. And he says, now this I say to you. Why does he say this? Verse 35. This, you should highlight verse 35 because when someone pulls out this verse out of context, you're going to have the answer. You'll be able to say, didn't you read why he said this? He says why he said it. This I say to you for your own benefit. Not to put a restraint on you, he says, but to promote what is appropriate and to secure undistracted devotion to the Lord. I'm just writing to secure undistracted devotion. You know, if, if somebody has the freedom to be full out, without distraction, focused on the Lord, do you think Paul wants them to do that? Man, he's like, I'm just trying to promote what's good. But if you're married, he's like, you have to remember, you're still married. This is a picture of Christ in the church. Don't worry. He's not against marriage. He's just trying to make sure that the ones that are single understand. You got now, If they could hear this in the way he's saying it, I think he's saying to the ones that are single, you guys kind of have an advantage in that you get to have your full attention turn towards God without having to split your your affections, you know, so to speak. You don't have to you don't have to think about your spouse and taking care of them and presenting yourself to the Lord. You've got no spouse to 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 have to 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 be, you know, worried about that. So you can just full out go, here I am. And Paul's saying, I'm just writing to you so that 
I just want to secure that that undistracted devotion. This is I'm just promoting what is good. But the reality is you have to under, you have to be humble enough to accept help. You have to. If God created woman to be a help me to men and some guy says I don't need her help. You know what he just he just literally the very purpose she is created for by God a pur God given purpose. And by the way, any time that we do our God given purpose that's when we feel the most fulfillment in life, as men and as women. Whenever we're doing that purpose we were created for, there's a great sense of fulfillment. So to say, I'm, I'm not letting her do her purpose. Forget that. I don't need her help. She can, you know, she can go on a date with me, but you know, that's because I'm so great and she can you know, like hang off my arm and be like, you know, I don't know. Arm candy, yes, come on. That's all I need, just arm candy. Do you understand that that does not promote what is good? That does not promote what is, you know, going to lead to to the real fulfillment of the people in the marriage. It's not. You just literally cut off the girl from being able to do what God has gifted her to do, and she is gifted to do it. By the way, I already know this. Any men that have been married a little while can give an amen to this. Are our wives gifted to help us? Amen? Amen. <laughs> oh, man, we only got a couple amens out of that. Yay. Sorry, gals. Yes, we are. They are. We, listen, God has gifted us with women that really know. They see things we don't see. Force, and it's not just colors, guys. They, they, see, they see a whole lot more than we see. They see how people feel. They see... How, you know, things that we just overlook. And God goes, you need help, so I'm giving you the help. you got to accept it. Now, if you're single, Paul would just encourage you, you have an advantage right now. You can present yourself to God without distraction. He says, you don't sin if you marry. Did you notice he said, if the single person marries, they don't sin? So you're not... You're not, your heart's desire to marry is not wrong. But while you're waiting, until you get married, while you wait, just use this time as special time for, hey, at least I can say, here I am, Lord. You know, without any distractions, I'm yours. Use me how you see fit. And you can get used. Don't, don't think you're not going to be able to be used as an individual. You will. You're just going to be able to be used without distraction. So I say to you, use it, use the time, enjoy it while you're single to, to, use, to use your body for who? This is, this is what's not being taught by the world. The world says you're single, use your body to please yourself or use your body to go do sin. That's not the word from the Lord. The word from the Lord is use your body to present to God without distraction. Here you are, Lord. I give you my body. But the same goes for you married folks. You've got to get up every morning and go, Here I am, Lord. Your body. My body is your body. And it also belongs to my spouse. So help me live how I'm supposed to, right? We don't get a choice. Because we're representing Christ in the church as married folks. We have to live up to that. People should look at our marriage and go, that's what I want. Look at how he, Tim treats Joanne. That's, that's the, that, there's something about that. I, I want that. And if they don't say that, then we got some marriage counseling points to work on. Because they should, right, Dan? They, I mean, they should, see, they should see how a godly man loves his wife and go, that's attractive. That's what I want. And when they inquire, why... Why is it like that? That's when we can say, because that's how Jesus loves the church. That's where I learned this. I'm just copying the Lord. It's a great witness. One of the greatest witnesses you can do for the Lord as married folks is just live your relationship out like it says in Ephesians 5. Men, just love your wives the way Christ loved the church. And people will go, wow, that's so cool. I want that. And the single folks around you will go, 
That's what I got to look forward to. Someday I'm going to do that too. We want to set a good example, don't we? And how to do this. Now, next week we're going to finish out the chapters. Just one more small po portion left to go. And pa Paul's got a couple more words. Just, just for, you know, those that, that are struggling in their singleness. But oh, we got dolphins? Oh, uh, and, we got, and we got swimmers jumping in going, yeah. Look, look. It's, uh, look at them. We got spinner dolphins, right? Just to end the sermon, we thought we'd have a little extra, you know, splash for you. It's, it's suffering. It's bad. Yeah. Poor people on the mainland, they've got to project this on their wall. We just look at it for real. Thank you, Lord. Those guys are having a fun day, eh? Okay, let's go get our suits. Let's pray. Father, thanks for this time. Thanks that we can be together. Just pray that these words would sink into our hearts, our minds. So they would help us, Lord, through this week. We also pray for Aaron. For Thank you for his beautiful little boy. Him and Beth, the, we just rejoice. Little John Robert has come into our lives. And we also pray for, for Russ up there in ICU. Pray for, for his doctor and the doctor's dad, Barry, that you would be with uh, them over in Oahu. Jerry, is it Jerry? Lord, and we just ask you to just, just take us, Lord, from this place feeling closer to you. Help us continue to draw near to you. You draw near to us as we leave this place, Lord. Be with us. In Christ's name we pray. And everyone that agreed with me said, Amen. Amen. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.